Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to Windows to Heaven Art Studio. I'm Stephen Cooley and I'm super excited to share with you guys five simple things that you can do that will instantly improve your painting. And the really cool thing is only one of these things actually has to do with physically painting, putting you know paint on a canvas. So these things range from when you are about to begin a painting all the way to when you have finished a painting. Now let's jump into the five things. Number one, this is when you are beginning your painting. Simplify your art. So when you are starting out painting, choose projects that are a lot more basic. Practice the basics until you master them, then you can build more technique upon technique and, and get better. It's a lot easier and more effective and efficient with your time and your painting energy than if you went and did something really complex right off the bat. It would end up discouraging you probably um, because it would be so hard and you would feel like you are floundering because you don't have the basics. So think of it like building a brick wall. You have the foundation, you start with that first, you just take one brick at a time, you start with really simple things just like the picture I'm going to show you right now. This is a, a painting of a tree that I did. It's really simple. You can see the, uh, it's just a blue background sky and then it's got a tree kind of in the middle that's super simple and then some brown grass, maybe like a hillside. This painting was super easy to do. And it helped me learn how to do the basics so that I was able to build off of that brick wall foundation with more bricks of technique, getting better and better, moving to more complex paintings later on. So that's the first step. Okay, number two. This is when you are actually getting into your painting. For this one, step back occasionally, maybe like six or seven feet, and just look at your picture. Get the, get the big picture. Because sometimes when you're painting for long periods of time like I do, and you're so close up and you're working on details, it's easy to lose sight of the forest through the trees, so to speak step back and get the whole picture. And it's amazing that when you do that, you will start to see things that you didn't see before, that you didn't notice before because you were so close up. You'll be like, oh, that kind of looks like a rock right there. Maybe, that, maybe that's you know, the edge of a forest line. And you start to see things better when you do it that way. So I, I will do that you know, every 10 minutes or so when I'm in the middle of doing my painting. And it has really helped a lot. Sometimes when my painting is going badly, and I don't like how it's going, I will actually stop the painting and go do something else, forget about my painting, and then come back to it later. And it's amazing that when you do that, you have a fresh start with your painting and it just, I don't know, it just goes better for some reason. Probably because you, when you come back to it after leaving it for a while, you're fresh, you, your, mind is, um, your mind is more engaged, and you start to see the painting in a better light when you leave it for a while. Because sometimes when you're painting, you know, for long periods of time and you're looking at the same thing for so long, it starts to just get monotonous. So yeah, that's number two. Just step back every once in a while and get a good look at it from farther back. Sometimes you may even need to leave your painting for a while. Okay, this is number three, and this is where it actually has to do with physically painting and it is use a wide range of color don't make your painting flat that tends to happen when you use a lack of color and I've talked about that in other episodes I'm going to show you two paintings right now that I've done where they are examples of a lack of color and it's kind of confusing because they're actually very bright and vibrant looking paintings but what I mean by using a lack of color is they don't have a wide range. The painting that you see right now is a painting that I did where you notice that the sky is basically just red and black. Um, the ground is basically just black and green and then the mountain you know might have some a little bit of brown in it but that's basically just three main colors that I painted the entire painting with and it ends up just looking a little flat, like something missing. 
you will get more bang for your buck with your paintings when you incorporate more colors and it actually adds a lot of interest. The painting that I'm going to show you now is another example of a flat painting that has a lack of color. It's, it just, you know, the sky is blue, the clouds are basically white with a little bit of yellow highlight, um, and everything else is basically just green. It has a lack of color. You might be painting a subject that only really has, you know, blue sky and, you know, green landscape, but it's amazing how many colors you can fit into a painting like that. Use a wider range of color, okay? Super simple stuff. Um, and you know, this, these five things, they apply to all artists. We, we are all doing this kind of stuff. So it will automatically improve your painting if you don't already know it. Okay, number four. This one I also didn't come up with. I was actually taught this step by another artist who does very incredible work. And I tried it out and it is really true. Frame your finished paintings. Now, I know there's styles out there where you just hang a canvas, you know, on the wall without a frame. You know, there's gallery style canvases where the sides are painted and whatnot. And that's really cool too, but this is for paintings where it's just a regular canvas and maybe you didn't paint the sides and it just looks like it, you know, it's, it's not gonna, do very well if it's hanging on the wall because you'll see the sides and they're not painted and the edges aren't very crisp and whatnot. This step is so important for your finished painting. Frame it. Think of it like putting icing on a cake. You still have the cake and it's really good and it might be a really good cake but it's only going to get better when you have the frosting on it. It's only going to improve your painting. And I've tried it out. It's really true. It just looks better. It looks dressed up and more complete when you have it in a frame. Okay, so we're at number five, the last thing, and this one is crucial. This one has been how I have actually mostly learned how to paint myself, and it is watch others paint. It is so beneficial to watch somebody else go through a painting, you know, even if it's in time lapse, because you pick up on things that you otherwise would have no idea how to do. And it's often much simpler than you had first thought it would be. It is springtime right around where I live right now and I've noticed a lot of baby birds learning how to fend for themselves. And it's basically the same thing for them too. They, they learn how to take care of themselves by following their mother around. Like we have baby robins around here, American robins, and they will follow their mother or father around on the ground and just watch them get worms. And that's how they learn how to do it themselves is by seeing another one do it. And that's how I learned how to paint. You don't need special schooling. You don't need to go to school to learn this kind of stuff. It's amazing how much you learn just by watching other people paint. You can even learn painting by looking at other finished paintings and seeing how they you know, added lighting and where they put color and you learn technique just even from that, much less seeing somebody actually paint, which is 10 times better. Um, even when you're you know, driving around in your car, just, just noticing how the light maybe is shining across the road or, or something like that, that is how you learn how to paint. It's the most basic, best, proven way is by you know, observation basically is what it is by observing others paint, by watching them, by looking at your surroundings. That is the best way. People used to, back in the olden days, they would apprentice under somebody. They would get to a certain age where they would come under somebody's wing and they would just work with them. Maybe it was a blacksmith making stuff, you know, with metal. An apprentice would come in and if they wanted to learn their trade, they would study under them by basically working alongside them and seeing how they do it. That's the best proven way, in my opinion, on how to paint. So take these things home for yourself, try them out. I'm sure that there is a lot more you know, stuff out there that will help you paint, um, but these five things will instantly improve your painting when you employ them. So try them out. I know that they've worked for me. That's why I'm sharing with you guys. I hope they work out for you. Also, I haven't done a video in 
about three weeks. I like to do a video every week or so. Um, that's just because I was on vacation and I was also busy with my website, which by the way, check it out. It is on the YouTube channel. If you just go to the about section or it's on the right side of the uh, my channel's banner, you just click on it. It will take you to my Etsy shop where you can look up a lot of the different things I have for sale on there. Really cool. Also like and subscribe for more painting videos. I'll try to do more later on. Uh, until then, God bless you guys. We'll see you later.